evening and welcome to the Scarborough Town Council meeting of November 18th. Um, Dean Marie, you would like to? Yes, uh, this evening I'd like to welcome Morgan Chaffin from the middle school who's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Please rise. I will, I, will, I will tell us more about Morgan under comments. Okay. Uh, item three is swearing in of newly elected officials. Uh, we have uh, Nicole Rico here. Would you come forward and I'll swear you in? <laughs> Crossing the bar? I don't know. No, I don't think so. You look scary. State your name. I, Nicole Rico, do solemnly swear, do solemnly <coughs> swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and of the state, and of the state, so long as I shall, so long as I shall, continue a citizen thereof, con continue to be a citizen thereof. I, and please state your name. I, Nicole Rico, do swear, do swear that I will faithfully <coughs> discharge, that I will faithfully discharge, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, the duties incumbent upon me, the duties incumbent upon me, as a member of the board of trustees, as a member of the board of trustees, for the Scarborough Sanitary District, for the Scarborough Sanitary District, in the town of Scarborough, in the town of Scarborough, according to the Constitution and the laws of the state. According to the Constitution and the laws of the state, the ordinances of the town of Scarborough, the ordinances of the town of Scarborough, and the bylaws of the sanitary district. And the bylaws of the sanitary district. Congratulations. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> At this time, I would ask uh, Chris Chiazzo and Robert Warren to come forward, please. You want to get right here? <coughs> and raise your right hand and repeat that. I am pleased to state your name. Uh, uh, Christopher Robert James Chiesa. I solemnly swear. You solemnly, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of the state. And of the state. So long as I shall. So long as I shall. Continue a citizen thereof. Continue a citizen thereof. <coughs> I am pleased to state your name. I, Robert Christopher Robert. James Kiesa. Do swear. Do swear. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent upon me. The duties incumbent upon me. As a town councilor. As a town councilor. In the town of Scarborough. In the town of Scarborough. According to the Constitution and the laws of the state. According to the Constitution and the laws of the state. In the charter of the town of Scarborough. In the charter of the town of Scarborough. Congratulations. <laughs> The next Temporary. order is order number 15-090, and that's act on the request for nominations and elections for a new town council chair. Are there any nominations? Move uh, to nominate Councilor Bill Donovan. Second. Okay. Any other nominations? There being none, all those in favor? That's unanimous. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Uh, order 15091, act on the request for nominations and election of a new town council vice chair. Uh, Ms. Kettering. Uh, yes, I'd like to nominate Sean Babine as vice chair of the Scarborough Town Council. Second. Second. <coughs> Any other nominations? Yeah. I'd like to nominate Jean Marie Katerina. Second. Very nice. Very nice. So we have uh, two. Any other nominations? Uh, we will take them uh, in the order in which they were <coughs> nominated. Uh, 
first nomination was uh, Councillor Baybine. All in favor, uh, raise your hand. Two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, second nominee was uh, Councillor Katerina. All in favor? Two. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Bebe. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, next order of business is a roll call. Councillor Baybine? Uh, present. Councillor Rowan? Present. Councillor Katerina? Here. Councillor St. Clair? Here. Councillor Hayes? Here. Councillor Chiazzo? Here. And Chairman Donovan? Here. Uh, uh, item five, uh, general public comments. Uh, anyone wishing to make a uh, comment, uh, please come up to the podium. Uh, please state your name and address. <laughs> uh, and you have three minutes. So please feel free. Anything that is not on the agenda for this evening uh, is uh, open to discussion. Recognize Mr. Tark. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. I've always spoken to the council respectfully, but frankly, and I'll do so again tonight. First thing is congratulations to the newest members of the council. Uh, next thing is, in late September, I wrote an open letter to all the Scarborough voters. I promised them three things. If I was elected, I would stick to the five points which I made my campaign. <coughs> Since I wasn't elected, the first promise doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> promise two, if the town council should end up with its present composition, personal property taxes will escalate quickly and steeply. Promise three, if the town council should end up in its present composition, the municipal and school debt will increase quickly and steeply. Now I'm asking you to prove me wrong. The last thing is, I wish the council to have a sense of humility. <clears throat> Often elected officials tend to have an overinflated sense of self. Remember you now represent all Scarborough citizens, not just the children. The children may come first on the school board, but now it is all of the citizens. There are approximately 20,000 people in Scarborough, and only 3,100 <coughs> of them approximately are school children. Also, to help with a sense of humility, looking back over past elections, the winners receive approximately 2,000 votes. <coughs> and those who lost have a total of approximately 3,000. To all seven counselors, I say good luck in your endeavors. I may speak against you, but I do support you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else, please feel free to uh, present yourself, name and address. Hi, good evening. My name is Mo Erickson. I live down in Pine Point on Pine Point Road. And um, I don't think the two things that I want to talk to you about tonight are on the agenda, but I'm going to talk to you about them because um, they're an issue for me. The first is I've brought it up in the past about the parking down on the Pine Point Road down by um, Snow's Canning Factory and Clambake. And I am just begging you guys to please stop having people park on that. They're parking now on both sides of the road. Um, and it's where people turn into the Clambake. It's at the Rotary. It's People are parking all along um, as soon as you go down the, the hill over the bridge in the bike lane there. And there is no sidewalk going down towards Pine Point, or for that matter, coming up the hill. And um, people are using that bike lane to park their cars. And so consequently, people who go running, people who actually have a bike, kids coming from the campground with you know, wagons full of beach stuff are forced to go in the road. Um, last year, on a few weekends, there were over 80 cars parked along those roads, that, that, that little bit of road right there. And I'm just, I know that in the past it was, um, I was told that because it was a state road or, or something that the town couldn't really do anything about it, but 
I wish somebody would try to figure this mess out because it's just getting worse with each passing summer. More and more people are parking there. Um, and from a revenue standpoint, you're losing all kinds of money. They could be going to the municipal parking lot and actually paying their fee, but why do that when they can park for free? But really my concern is the safety issue of having cars park along there. It's just, it's horrendous. Um, the second thing is I am disgusted that, you, that the town would spend $18,000 for 11 parking spaces at Higgins Beach. I can tell you I have two kids on the swim team and I have to come up with, aside from each of them for their $100 fee for the athletics, $150 each for them to swim. Mm -hmm. And you guys are letting the town pay $18,000 for 11 parking spaces. I don't know who's running Higgins Beach, but somebody is, and it's not the town people. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in general comment time? Seeing no one, we'll move to item six, uh, the minutes of November 4, 2015, a regular meeting. Do I have approval? Second. Uh, any uh, amendments, alterations, or questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed? And two abstentions for our two members. For our two new members. I was also not For our two here. new members. I was also not here. Sorry. And an abstention for okay. uh, Councilor St. Clair who was absent. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, item seven, uh, adjustments to the agenda. There are, uh, there are none at this time. Uh, item eight, uh, items to be signed, uh, treasurer's warrants. I'll attend to that later. I don't actually know what that means. <laughs> but, 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 but I've had uh, uh, several years of listening to that said by council chair, so I'll <laughs> certainly do it. <laughs> uh, and so we're on to uh, the order number 15084, a 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405, uh, the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance to establish a new section, Roman numeral 16B, Higgins Beach character-based zoning district and building standards. I will note the other two public hearing related items at this time. Order number 15085, 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to the Town of Scarborough official zoning map to delineate the Higgins Beach character districts. And order number 15086, 7 p.m. public hearing on the proposed amendments to Chapter 405C, the Town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinance to address the development coverage allowance in the Higgins Beach area. Uh, we have the town planner, Dan Bacon, here who will provide us with uh, and a, a review of what's being proposed for the benefit of everyone here in the audience. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I realize the council's um, heard a presentation a few times now, at least uh, five of you. So I'm going to do a, a briefer presentation this evening, but also one that's uh, thorough enough to bring up the two new councilors up to speed, as well as for the benefit of the audience and, and those at home watching. Um, the Higgins Beach. <coughs> Uh, termed kind of code repair initiative um, uh, started last spring and we've been working hard uh, with a lot of input from the Higgins Beach Association and residents on, on shaping a, a new zoning district and new zoning standards for Higgins Beach. Um, the zoning has been out of step with the character of Higgins Beach for, for adding the screen. Um, <laughs> beneficial because those aren't in the, the Sorry, best Sorry, some people color. were like. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been working on the codes at Higgins Beach for quite some time to, to really bring uh, the zoning in line with the lot sizes and, and the historical character of Higgins Beach. Right now, the zoning is, is really out of step with um, the, the lot sizes at Higgins Beach, um, building setbacks and the lot size uh, requirements uh, don't allow for much in the way of additions or new construction. 
Um, the building setbacks that exist today are, are really disrupting and conflicting with the proper placement of new homes or additions. They're pushing houses back from the street when the, the pattern and character is closer to the street. They're requiring um, buildings to be further apart when the, the character is buildings to be closer together. Um, and they're, they're really kind of producing buildings that aren't in scale or inconsistent with um, Higgins Beach and the predominant pattern. We also have some conflicts in terms of local zoning and it's, it's conflicting with some of the environmental regulations. So this code repair is attempting to, to address some of those issues. This is a little sketch that our consultant did try to, to try to illustrate how the current zoning isn't, is out of step with Higgins Beach. And the, the yellow building generally meets the current zoning when, when the three others um, were built prior to zoning even existing. So this helps illustrate some of the challenges for new construction or additions down at, at the beach. And in a nutshell, this is what the zoning's trying to enable. Um, new additions, new construction that, that kind of fits into um, Higgins Beach and its historical character. So the goals are to enable additions, enable some renovations and, and new construction at Higgins um, without going to the zoning board to get a variance, without having to do it in a, an odd way or not be able to do it at all. Um, and this code is trying to promote if changes are in character with the neighborhood, then they can be reviewed administratively um, through the planning staff and getting a permit rather than, again, going to a, to a board to plead your case for approval. And like I said earlier, we're also trying to coordinate um, some of the, the zoning codes with the other environmental regulations that exist. To generate the code and to get input, we spent a lot of time at Higgins Beach in June and then back in September um, to talk through what is the character of Higgins Beach, what's important to people, what, what are additions that make sense, um, what's, what's in scale, what isn't. So there was a lot of work done through surveys and discussions to, to get at what the code should enable. And a lot of discussion that involved walking around in the neighborhood and, and getting a feel for the area or learning from residents that know the area much better than the consultants or, or uh, staff involved. And this resulted in a primarily a, a, coastal, a new coastal residential district. Um, that applies to essentially the, the entire Higgins Beach neighborhood, but for a few outlier areas that um, were developed more recently than uh, the majority of the neighborhood. And in this district, um, there are specific lot standards and, and building placement standards that make existing lots conforming. Right now, 50 by 100 lots are non-conforming, but that's the, by and large, the average lot. So this code makes that a conforming lot and then makes uh, a variety of other standards to allow lesser setbacks and buildings closer together, et cetera. There are also four um, key commercial or non-residential properties at Higgins Beach, you know, under the goals for creating conformity. Um, this code is recognizing those four properties and identifying them as limited mixed-use properties or limited commercial properties so that they too can become conforming, they can do some things to change and not always be faced with um, prohibitions or having to get variances. The other aspect of Higgins Beach, um, particularly in this section of Higgins, is the, the other regulations. Um, so the code includes the shoreland zoning requirements and actually proposes a change to allow uh, a higher development coverage in the shoreland zone from 20%, which is the restriction town-wide, to 35%. And that can enable um, properties, to, again, to add on, to make changes in a way that <coughs> consistent with their neighbors, consistent with other properties. And we've been working with the Department of Environmental Protection to enable this, express this special uh, approval at Higgins Beach because we've demonstrated that that's the average development coverage in, in this area. The code also includes um, building types um, that are um, allowed at Higgins Beach 
and they include a couple of different types that exist today. Right now there's a lot of coastal cottages, and right now because of the current zoning, it's not easy to add on to these cottages. Um, so the code includes this building type and bungalows because a lot of people are seeking additional square footage, uh, additions, modernization, but want to keep the character of those cottages. So we included that to recognize and to give guidance as to how you add on to these cottages while doing it in a way that makes sense, that matches its, its character and um, grows structures to the side or rear, things of that nature. There's also a desire to tear down old cottages and put up new houses on lots. Um, and so the code spends a lot of time on how that's allowed for, so that houses are, again, placed um, consistent with other cottages, um, are larger but still in scale uh, with Higgins Beach, and provides guidance on how you can add porches and dormers and different things so that um, it's in keeping with uh, the character of Higgins. So this slide gives you some examples of what those components are, what those additions or additional things that people can add, like a porch or a rear addition or a dormer to get more square footage while still um, being in scale. This slide shows another component that a lot of property owners down there need to contend with and that's elevating for, uh, for, flood, for the flood zones and resiliency and that can be a big kind of architectural trick or component. So we're providing some examples as to how properties would do that down there mm -hmm. to, to add additional um, height um, while still being in scale with, with the general neighborhood. And lastly, parking is, um, <coughs> is certainly something that, that needs to be considered when you're laying out a site. And then when you, build, when you bring buildings closer to the street or you're adding on closer to the street, then um, parking needs to be sited to the side, which is really the historical approach. That earlier slide showed the new house that's kind of set back that where parking's in front. And so we want to provide good guidance as to where driveway should go, where sh parking should go, and encourage the house to be the feature, not a, not a front parking area uh, on sites. So really in conclusion, um, what the code is about is it's about where the house goes on the lot, generally how big it is, um, generally what the form of the house is, and its scale. It's not intended to be about specific style of house or specific architecture that needs to be duplicative from one lot to another. There's a lot of images in the code that make it look like each house has to look like the other. Um, and that's really because we're trying to just show generic examples. Um, so there is a fair amount of creativity, a fair amount of um, uniqueness that you can come up with using the code. This is maybe an extreme example, but um, this is showing two houses that, that generally meet the, the proposal. One is a very traditional New England house, another is a certainly a more modern house. Um, they're similar size, there's, they have porches, they have um, different components that are encouraged in the code. Uh, they both likely would be allowed. So this isn't have to be only bungalows, cottages, and, and beach houses. This is the proposed uh, zoning map amendment where in orange uh, the va vast majority of Higgins Beach would be that new residential district with the in, I guess, darker orange. Uh, there's the, the four mixed-use properties, the Breakers, the Higgins Beach Inn, uh, the Higgins Beach Clubhouse and the Higgins Beach Market. So that's the zoning map change. This is the second order on your agenda item. Um, so in conclusion, as um, Councillor and Chair Donovan introduced, uh, there's an entirely new um, zoning district and new code proposed that would go in the zoning ordinance. There's the zoning map amendment I just showed uh, on the last slide, and then there's a shoreland zoning amendment, which is your third order um, for public hearing, which is the change to 35% development coverage. It's a separate ordinance where 
Uh, <coughs> given our conversations with DEP, we can increase it to, to allow more development and expansion at Higgins Beach. So I want to thank, thank you all for um, listening to the presentation and also this kind of slide highlights it's not just staff and the consultants, <coughs> a lot of time and energy spent by the Higgins Beach neighborhood. So I want to thank all of them for all of their time and participation um, from last mm -hmm. year and all the way up until today. We're still working through some finer details um, and um, hope to come back to you at your next meeting with a, a final proposal. There's a few adjustments that we hope to make with guidance from um, Chairman Donovan and with input from, from the residents that, that continues to this day. So, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we have three public hearings. Uh, the body of the ordinance is a, a, uh, up for a public hearing. The zoning map is in a different section of our zoning code and therefore uh, a separate public hearing. Uh, and the shoreland zoning issue uh, uh, of restricting uh, uh, lot coverage to 35% uh, is in a third section. That's the need for three separate uh, public hearings. I don't want people to f say, am I getting up or down at the wrong time? So I'm going to compress them all in and, and, and just apply some liberal provision to uh, speaking so that people can get up, uh, have their say, uh, and we will uh, uh, attempt to be able to allow people to uh, use, that would be nine minutes, uh, uh, and if, uh, if need be, uh, we'll allow people to come up a second time. But we'll start by uh, uh, using a little bit of discretion uh, so as to allow people to just speak on whatever issue about the zoning uh, without trying to identify uh, which of the public hearings they're speaking to. So I welcome anyone who would like to be able to kick us off. Uh, I must say uh, Dan Bacon has been very accessible. Uh, he is quite right that uh, uh, people are continuing to look at it, tweak it. Uh, we've had very good input. We had very good input at the planning board on Monday night, uh, uh, which continues to allow us to see if we can get the uh, uh, the, any little flaw is out before we had, uh, consider it for adoption on December 2nd. So uh, who would like to lead off? Name and address, please. My name is Roger Shabbat, 12 Howland Street, Higgins Beach. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate the uh, two new chair, chair people that we have on the board, Chris and Will and also uh, Council Chair Donovan and Vice Council Chair Sean. Uh, congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Uh, the reason I'm here today is to talk about what went on this summer, uh, <coughs> including uh, us at Higgins Beach, and it was first started by Dan Bacon uh, addressing us and asking if we would host a uh, bunch of meetings which we had uh, I must say that all four meetings that we had down there where the public had a chance to speak were well attended, including the last meeting where we had the clubhouse open for uh, a good hundred people that showed up. Uh, Dan uh, had emails for us to uh, present to the uh, people at Higgins, and every time I got an email from him, I passed it on to our email list so that as many of the uh, residents had what we all had and were able to input, ask questions, and when they came to us, we passed them on to Dan. Dan uh, uh, answered them. Anyway, uh, I, I do want to thank the town for allowing this to happen. I want to thank Dan very much for <coughs> all of his help. The consultants that we have were very uh, cordial and answered our questions. The Long Range Planning Committee, we want to thank them along with the Planning Board and you folks, the Town Council. Uh, it's, it's nice to be able to be included in this decision making that we went through and I do recommend that if it goes on 
to other sections of town that uh, they do adopt the same type of procedure because it was a help to the community and I think it's going to be a help to you when you get the final results to uh, approve what went on this summer. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susan Naden from 17 Shipwreck Road. And I would like to thank everyone who has been involved in the Higgins Beach rezoning process. Town officials were correct when they identified current regulations as problematic. Recently, new construction has not been able to fit into the pattern of the community and the character of the Higgins Beach neighborhood has, has suffered. Building has become, cha had become chaotic and by necessity, traditional cottages are being replaced with three-story lot-filling towers which dwarf and shadow the cottages around them. Most residents do not want Higgins Beach to look or feel like New Jersey. From the beginning, Higgins Beach property owners have been invited to critique the proposed changes. The weekend charrette in June held at the beach so that people could easily drop by and get involved was very well attended. Dan Bacon, Brian Longstaff, the team of consultants, the representatives from DEP and FEMA, and others were all well prepared and were there to present ideas and listen to feedback. Since then, as new ideas have been suggested, opportunities have been available to participate in person or by email or phone to comment on proposed changes. I understand that each new construction project will have an administrative review and that some small changes may be made in the code. But overall, I think the new charrette-based zoning for Higgins Beach is a huge step forward in an attempt to preserve our community's atmosphere, and I thank all who have worked so hard to draft and present it. Also, uh, thank you to the retiring councillors, to the new council members, congratulations, and the new chair and the co-chair. And I hope we have a team that will work together for the good of Scarborough. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Again, my name is Mo Erickson. I live at uh, 288 Pine Point Road. I also um, own a house with two of my sisters down in Pine Point. And I came to the planning, uh, planning board meeting this past Monday and listened to Dan and, um, and was actually pretty relieved uh, when I heard the presentation. I was pleasantly surprised uh, about some of the suggested plans and the ideas for renovating or building new places in Higgins, uh, that it wasn't going to be quite a dictatorship that I had heard that it might be. But, um, you know, I've lived my whole life in Pine Point, and um, I can tell you that not everybody wants to live in a, in a cottage-style house, or um, they don't want to have somebody tell them, well, this is how it's always been, so this is how we're going to keep doing it. People have the right to remodel their house or build their house however they they feel like it. And I just, um, I hope we all keep that in mind when it comes to making decisions as far as neighborhood integrity. Um, I know that when I read the article in the leader or the current the other day uh, about this, all the planning stuff in Higgins, I kept thinking to myself, geez, I... I hope they just stay in Higgins and don't come down in Pine Point. And then, of course, the very end said, well, we can't wait to bring this model and, and incorporate it into the neighborhood in Pine Point. But I can tell you I've spoken to a lot of my neighbors down there, and the feeling is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's nothing wrong with Pine Point, and I know a lot of people, we don't want to have this, um, all this stuff down in Pine Point. I can appreciate that maybe that's what they want to do at Higgins and more power to them, but um, I don't want it incorporated into Pine Point. I, I like Pine Point the way it is, and if, if I decide to renovate my house, I want to be able to do it to the best of my ability without having somebody else tell me how to do it, just because they want to keep it in line with their, the neighbor's house. But I do appreciate all the work that went into Dan's work. It was, it was great. Um, I think maybe it's a fitting model for Higgins, but... I don't know about Pine Point. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak?
Hi, I'm Allison Bristol, 6 Bayview Avenue, Higgins Beach, and I'd also like to congratulate the new chair, the new co-chair, and the two new town council members. Um, I had a question about, uh, well, first of all, before I have a, ask my question, um, I'd li also like to thank Dan Bacon for all the work that he's put into this and for being very accessible to questions. It's really been a learning experience and quite an experience, a massive undertaking. Um, my question is about the um, mixed-use limited definition with the four commercial properties that are proposed or mixed-use uh, properties that are proposed down at Higgins Beach in that um, the, it, they're defined as either residential, in buildings, uh, shop houses, or neighborhood stores. And so I guess my question, with the goal of making all the lots in Higgins Beach conforming um, at the, uh, you know, down the road, hopefully way down the road when properties are redeveloped, what might this mean in terms of input that the neighborhood would have in terms of what kind of retail shop or what kind of neighborhood store might go in um, to these properties? Thank you. Thank you. Dan, do you want to take a crack at that? Uh. The, <clears throat> the mixed use zone that's proposed to apply to just the four uh, properties that are shown up on the map, um, it's, it's designed to be quite limiting. It's it's intended to allow really the only four or five non-residential land uses that are <coughs> occurring down at Higgins. Um, there's <coughs> an allowance for hotels and bed and breakfast, which Higgins Beach Inn and the Breakers are. Um, it allows for retail, which the Higgins Beach Market is, and it allows for restaurants limited to no like drive through or uh, that type of restaurant. So a sit-down type restaurant. Um, that being said, there is potential under the code that you know things on the individual properties can change. So um, the Higgins Beach Inn, you know, maybe was it four or five years ago, added to their restaurant. You know, they expanded their restaurant. So. Um, they made it more of a restaurant than it was in the past. So, so it's it's fairly limited, but there is opportunities for change. You know, things can something could convert. Say the Breakers first floor could be converted to a restaurant and not just a dining area for the bed and breakfast. Um, that being said, there are under current or ordinances there is review process that can that deal with that. The planning board looks at. Um, when a commercial activity adds parking, changes their driveway, adds onto a commercial building. So that ordinance is in place and would, if any of those things are happening, would trigger planning board review where there would be review of that change and opportunity for public comment, things of that nature. Um, if there isn't changes like I mentioned, you know, parking changes or building addition or driveway changes, a change of use on its own right now doesn't trigger planning board review under site plan. So I think that's something that there's been some questions about. You know, should, uh, what is the proper review of a commercial use that might be changing from one to another um, and given the nature of the area. So that's something that, um, Chairman Donovan and I have talked a little bit about and can continue to, but that's the lay of the land right now as proposed. Thank you. Uh, anyone else who'd like to speak? Seeing no one, we'll uh, close the public hearing, uh, all three public hearings. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, oftentimes a question is appropriate to being addressed because it has interest broadly. Sometimes questions are narrower uh, and people will make a point and we'll try to uh, answer those offline. Frequently, counselors will just 
take it upon themselves to be in touch with people who uh, have uh, questions because it is a public hearing and it's intended to have the opportunity to go to the podium, have your say uh, without it really uh, sort of uh, being engaged in a debate. But there are instances like this one where <clears throat> it was an important question about how the uh, uh, mixed use district was going to operate. And so with Dan being immediately available, uh, it, was appro it seemed appropriate to allow him to answer it. Uh, I think the same can be said in the uh, general comments. We don't really engage in a debate at the beginning when we have general comments. But town council members will frequently pick up the phone, email, and be in touch with people who have questions. Uh, and uh, I think you'll see us uh, make an effort to do that frequently uh, so that people who have concerns and issues that maybe we're not prepared to talk about uh, right off the top of our heads uh, are, are still nevertheless going to be uh, followed up. Uh, all business, none at this time. <coughs> uh, uh, new business, order number 15092. Act on the request from the Coastal Waters and Harbor Commission to utilize funds from the Working Waterfront Reserve Capital Improvement Account for repairs to floats at clay pits and installation of an additional ladder at the Pine Point Pier in an amount not to exceed $19,500 and authorize the town manager to sign any and all documents relating to these items. I will ask the town manager to address this for us. Certainly. Um, the town was made aware through the Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory Committee. Uh, Chairman Mark Holston um, authored a, a letter that was sent to the town. You know, Councilor Hayes uh, is the liaison to that group and I think reported similar findings or commentary <laughs> from them. Yeah. Um, so there's a number of improvements that uh, need to be made, namely, uh, as was mentioned, um, replacement of floats at clay pits, which are in dire need. Public Works uh, takes them in and out every year. And uh, apparently upon removal this fall, they were literally disintegrated. Mm -hmm. So it's really something that needs to be addressed uh, before we launch them again in the spring. And then uh, a secondary piece, and this is uh, something that was consciously overlooked at the time we built the pier, the commercial fish pier. There was proposed to be two ladders. We only installed one at the time uh, and wanted a sense of whether that would be sufficient. In fact, it's not. It's kind of in the wrong location. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to use some of the reserve funds to actually get that ladder built and, and fastened to the uh, face of the pier. Uh, for those new counselors and perhaps for the recollection of existing counselors, um, at the conclusion of the construction of the new commercial pier back in uh, early 2012, there were additional funds left over. We came in under budget, and the council at the time saw it worthy to actually dedicate those funds into a reserve account for the express purpose of uh, capital needs on the waterfront, and that's uh, certainly what I would characterize these as. So the request is for you to authorize me to use up to $19,500 from that fund, which has a current balance of about $28,000, excuse me, $27,500, if you will. Um, to accomplish these improvements. Pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. Uh, comments? Peter, would you like to uh, give us a little of your perspective from the Coastal Committee? Sure. I mean, I, I guess my perspective is, and you know, actually, these, these are very conscientious folks. They really are pretty frugal in the way they look at things. These are some things that really need to be done. Um, so I, I think it, I would I would recommending uh, approve their recommendations. Good. They've given it a lot of thought. And actually, I think Tom they they've actually changed some of the specs on the ladder too to get it down to a different <coughs> price point. Even um, better. Yeah. So I'll certainly not spend any more than I need to to satisfy the need. Councilor of Cahill. Just a quick question, Tom. Can you give, maybe give me a little background on? how that fund is replenished or if it's replenished or once those funds are depleted, does it go away and then we look at another source of revenue or? Yeah, the, the initial infusion of money, and just for the record, uh, back when it was created, uh, some of, well actually right at that same time, uh, we, we uh, used some of it to, to build some uh, floats at the time, but there was a balance of $23,000 that went into that fund, excuse me, $29,000. Um, we've not used much of any of that we have instituted a $100 annual fee to users of the, uh, the, the pier, 
Uh, in fiscal year 16, we we're budgeted to receive about $11,000 in revenue. Now, there are operating expenses <coughs> of these utilities. There's water and, and electric. And there are some um, smaller repairs that are required. To the extent that we don't spend all of that money, we do sweep that into this account. And so I don't expect it will grow tremendously over time, but slowly. Um, but I think these improvements uh, should last several years, four or five or six. So I, I think it's a wise investment. Thank you. Council Rowan? So that may have answered my question, but did you say that we expect the lifetime of those floats to be about five or six years? Or? That's been our experience. It depends. Uh, storm damage can sometimes accelerate that, uh, the aging process. Um, and we also do cycle them in. Some of the areas are, are better sheltered and less used, and, and we try to get as absolutely many years out of these as we possibly can. And, and do we have an idea for of um, kind of the, the usage, the number of people that are using the, the clay pits? Um, I beg your pardon. I, I wouldn't even dare hazard a guess on that. Um, but I can assure you when you need it, you need it uh, to be able to launch a <laughs> boat. Um, I think from a, a recreational point of view, particularly uh, clay pits is, mm -hmm. a, is a popular bo boat launching site. A lot of paddle boarders go in and out of there, too. I think mm -hmm. Elburn Sports does. So it's kind of a mixed use. <coughs> Thank you. It's accessed quite a bit. You good? Uh, any other comments? Councilor Katarina? Yeah, if, if the uh, folks who use these um, facilities think they need to be replaced, as Peter mentioned, they're pretty frugal. Yeah. If they think we need to, we should be spending the money for this, it's definitely a good investment in their livelihood. So I would definitely uh, approve of this. Other comments? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next order of business, uh, item nine, non-action items. There are none at this time. Item 10, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Uh, why don't we start uh, at our vice chair. And, and I have none this evening. Thank you. And uh, none, so Cat uh, Councilor Katarina. I have none. Peter? Um. Oh. Hey, um, um, <laughs> no, I'm just hanging out here tonight. So now we'll boop back. <laughs> you went to Peter, though. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought you just looped over me. No, we're going looped over Chris. back to yeah, Oh, over. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mistake. I'm very sorry. I'm losing it. <laughs> um, a couple. One, the, the senior program advisory board met and actually great news there is someone new on board Ed Mann who it was his first I think it was his second day on the job yeah. and he was pr very impressive he hit the ground running and the last meeting the committee had talked about trying to find more programs for seniors to get more involved some of the committee had mentioned you know putting in a horseshoe pit which was done in between meetings it's it's, it's over by the tennis court so a lot more energy for the groups. Um, they're looking for good things. They're really looking to get activated. So that was a, it was a great meeting, a great start. Um, the other two committees that met, and we've already talked about it, was really both the, the you know the shellfish conservation committee and the harbor committee met. We did talk about some of these issues that we just talked about, but more importantly, also good news. They're, they are in the interview process for a new harbor master. Um, some of the committee members participated in part of that process, and the good news is. They're really excited. There's, there's a great group of candidates, and they really think that that group of candidates, any one of them would be just a great addition to the town and great to work with. So that was really, they were really encouraged and feeling good about the process and where it was. So that was, that was good news. Thank you. And I think with that, that's, that's my report. Councilor <laughs> Sankai. Sorry. Um, yeah, ordinance did not meet last month because we had the election. Um, I know one thing that we've been talking about, we talked about before the election, was really trying to look at the fee schedules. Um, I probably would want to talk with finance a little bit about that and get some feedback from them. And also I have a list for Tom that I'll CC you on, um, finance people on, just so that if they have any input for that. But I've really tried to go through a lot of that, a lot of the fees that we charge in town. Um, some of them are, are very, very reasonable, which is great. Um, but there is there are some fees that haven't been changed in probably 20 years. So there's definitely some room that we could probably have a little bit more income coming in, which I don't think is something that we should ever shy away from. 
Um, so that's it for, we, uh, like I said, we didn't have a meeting that month. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Energy Committee uh, met uh, uh, and has and spent the entire uh, time working on the uh, municipal solid waste uh, issue that we've, as a council, asked them to report out to us. Uh, they're making considerable progress on their report. Uh, I think one more meeting in December uh, should allow us to then draft the report in January for presentation probably in February. So that's the timeline for that and uh, good progress is being made. Uh, town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> a couple points of interest. Uh, I was pleased to participate on a, as a uh, panelist at a stormwater convention, um, <laughs> most notably, uh, and it exciting. sounds a little strange, but this was, uh, <laughs> there was a conscious effort to oh. get managers, uh, and so I served uh, with five other municipal managers on a water-wise municipal <coughs> manager uh, panel. I was certainly pleased to be invited. Um, I was coerced a bit. Our new town engineer, <laughs> Angelo Blanchett, is uh, rabidly interested in these, these matters, thankfully. And I was very pleased. I think we had seven members of staff attend the day, the morning I was there. So um, I've come to appreciate that stormwater management is an issue that we, we must be thinking about and dealing mm -hmm. with. And, and we are to be, uh, we are certainly recognized statewide as a leader in, in doing so. And a lot of it has to do with staff's <coughs> initiative. Uh, I did brief the council. Uh, we finalized the senior property tax relief program uh, for this year. Unfortunately, it confirmed our suspicions that um, the numbers are terribly, terribly low. Uh, I guess we're not surprised. We're just disappointed that it was validated. We had a total of 105 applications and granted uh, just mm -hmm. about $33,000 in property tax relief. That's to be compared with some of the high years back, um, mm -hmm. about 125,000 in relief back into yeah. the community. So the council's to be certainly acknowledged and congratulated to take that matter on, to put in place new eligibility standards, and we certainly hope to see that program get back to where it was. Uh, I'll also remind councilors, uh, tomorrow in these chambers, uh, 1 to 3.30 p.m., the police department's coordinated a forum on the heroin and opiate uh, addiction epi epidemic. Uh, this is a continued uh, part of the effort. Uh, of course, the Operation Hope is, is their main focus. They're trying to broaden that conversation. They've invited uh, state legislators, other interested parties, and certainly members of council are invited to be part of that conversation tomorrow afternoon here in these chambers. Um, I was pleased to be part of a dedication ceremony last Tuesday for the Tri-Generation Project. Um, that's been a long project, uh, long in coming, I should say. Uh, we are now under full operation. These lights are to be credited to uh, a natural gas uh, engine that's running right beside us and providing for all the heat, power, and electricity needs of this facility. Uh, Councilor Donovan was able to be there as the liaison uh, to the Energy Committee, I think is well attended and certainly pleased to, to get that uh, project moving. And then on a lighter, lighter note, we do have the tree lighting ceremony mm -hmm. coming up Saturday, December 5th here at Municipal Park at 5 p.m. Certainly encourage folks to, uh, to be part of that event. Um, this year we did plant a, uh, a live tree, and so we don't have to go to the hassle of <laughs> <laughs> locating a tree, cutting it down, transporting it, erecting it. So uh, we certainly hope that this will be a tradition that takes hold and this community can really rally around that. And lastly, uh, next week being uh, Thanksgiving week, I just want to make a reminder, of course, Thanksgiving is Thursday. Our normal um, closing time Wednesday would be 6.30. <coughs> I'd like to, uh, I will be shutting town hall at the normal 4 o'clock to allow staff just to <coughs> get about their family duties and responsibilities. So thank you very much. Council member comments. Uh, <coughs> Councilor Caizo, let's start down at your end. All right. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Chairman Donovan and Vice Chair Babine. Uh, look forward to working under your guidance and leadership this year and doing some, some great things for the town. Uh, I did want to take a moment to express my heartfelt thanks to the people of Scarborough for electing me as one of your town councillors. In an off year with four equally deserving candidates, it's reassuring to know that not only did you, the voters, turn out in very respectable numbers, I believe it was about 27 percent, but the values and principles I campaigned on are shared by a great many in the community. 
In spite of receiving the most votes, I can assure you that there is no such thing as a mandate in our town. We do not put party affiliations next to our names or divide our town into precincts or wards for a very important reason. <coughs> as town councillors, I believe our role is to work together to represent the entire community. Coming from my experience on the school board, I fully realize not everyone's going to agree with my position on every issue. Our community consists of many diverse views, and I believe the makeup of this council fairly represents that. As such, I look forward to many open and public discussions in the upcoming year. As a town representative, I will listen to anyone who wishes to engage in a fact-based, respectful, and civil dialogue. I will do my best to address the issues that come before this council in an open, fair, and nonpartisan way, and will always strive to put the needs of Scarborough first. Thank you again for giving me the honor of representing you. I look forward to working with each of my colleagues and helping to manage our town in an effective and transparent way. And I intend to work hard and will try to lead by example. Hopefully in that process, I'll earn the respect and trust of my fellow councillors and most importantly, the citizens of Scarborough. Thank you. Councillor Hayes. Yeah, good evening and I'd like to welcome the new councillors and the new leadership. Um, and this will be kind of a rambling piece maybe. Um, but I kind of like to, again, pull our attention back to Project Hope and what it's doing. I just, it, it's amazing to me the number of people that they have actually seen walk through their doors. And on that note, part of my passion is healthcare. I've been involved with healthcare for a while, but today um, there were 400 people that were at the Holiday Inn by the Bay. It was the Maine Health Management Coalition, which mm -hmm. is really made up of employers that are providing healthcare, systems that are providing healthcare, and also the Maine Medical Association. And they shared that a lot of the physicians in this community are also organizing an effort around trying to do something about some of the addiction issues and other things. So it's really kind of growing. I mean, just as you had shared, I thought that was pretty remarkable. Um, pretty a sobering week with all the world events that are going on. And mm -hmm. given that, it's kind of, it's kind of bittersweet because I know the, the Scarborough boys soccer team had a recent championship game. Um, played the Owl. I grew up in Lewiston, Auburn area. But, you know, when you take the world events, what's going on, what was neat about that story, the Lewiston that won, eight of those players were in some type of refugee camp mm -hmm. and have come to this country. And that, to me, is just a remarkable story. So those are all kind of strange events that are happening and in it's interesting times. So thank you. It's <coughs> <coughs> kind of hard to follow those <laughs> two speeches, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> um, obviously, clearly, welcome to the two new counselors. I've had a chance to meet with Will, and um, I know Chris pretty well, um, and, ap and did apologize. I have not had a chance to meet with him. Um, but I'm excited. I think it's going to be a good year. Um, I think the really amazing thing is you can take seven people that are completely different and put them in a room, and, and they all share one common goal, and that is to make this town as productive, um, as productive, as healthy, as happy as we can possibly make it. Um, and that's, that says a lot about the people that sit up here. Um, congratulations to Councillor Babine and Councillor Donovan. Um, I think I really, truly believe that we're going to have a good year. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So thank you both. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Baban. Thank you. Um, so first I wanted to mention that um, as the holiday season starts, it's hard to believe a year has gone by. There's like three ways a town councillor can measure the year. There's the fiscal year that starts in July 1st. There's the election year that starts in November. And then there's, of course, the calendar year. And no matter what, each one of them goes by extremely fast, and here we are approaching Thanksgiving. I did want to mention that um, don't forget that Saturday, November 28th, is Maine Small Business Day. Mm. Um, it's after Thanksgiving, so uh, save your um, shopping and buy from a local small business, particularly here in Scarborough, because they can use your support. Um, I wanted to also congratulate the Scarborough Police Department's Marine Resource Officer, Dave Corvo, who has officially retired. And as Peter mentioned, he did kind of retire a little early, but it's official now in November. Um, the reason why I bring that up is to mention that there was a wonderful letter uh, in the paper by Chief, uh, Police Chief Moulton that talked about his 37 years of service, and there was one big thing that actually wasn't mentioned. Um, that he did actually two big things. One is um, when I first got a, involved in town politics back in early 2000, late 90s, first thing someone said was, if you really want to serve the town, do your research first and go to the town parking lot on lottery night when the clam diggers get their <laughs> permit. And if you can survive that night, then uh, you probably do a good job. And because back then it used to be a lottery and you had to stand out here, and it was a, it was a tough crowd. And he was actually a big part of changing that culture 
and changing everyone really getting together and working together. Um, the bigger piece is that, as it was mentioned, one of the things that we talked about this evening is that um, David, uh, you know, um, Dave Corbo was a big influence in the waterfront, the working waterfront reengineering project down to Pine Point. Mm -hmm. It was a 2.3 million dollar project in which the council um, leveraged about 200. Uh, Four hundred thousand dollars in its local investments with the state's um, contribution to get that 2.3 to get that rebuilt, and he was a big influence. And I think Tom, that might have been the first year that you were joined us as manager because yep. you helped with that as well as the community services director. So uh, it's it's a lasting legacy for him. So good luck to him in his retirement. Um, welcome to our two newest counselors. Welcome to the doghouse. Because <laughs> um, there's going to be many nights when you go home that your wife and partners are going to sit there and say, you're in the doghouse because I don't want to hear any more about it. Uh, so get used to that part of it, but you're going to enjoy it. Um, I look forward to working with um, both of you as well as the rest of the council, as well as the school board and their new members as we uh, continue to forge our relationships. So I'm really happy about the direction that we're moving. Um, you know, something to ponder, one of the things that kind of got brought up this, uh, as far as the tone this past year in reflection is about how people perceive our governing bodies, whether it's the town council by itself, whether it's a school board, or whether it's um, you know that wonderful sanitary district that Mr. Rico <laughs> serves on that no one sometimes knows about. But um, there are perceptions. <laughs> there are perceptions. I mean, the jokes that you can talk about with the sanitary district, right? Um, but there are perceptions, and one of the things that I, I hope that we work on is changing some of those. And so one of them because um, it was a big deal in our family is that I hope that going forward on nights like tonight when we do swearing in that there is more of a community presence and I know everyone's schedule is a little difficult but it would have been nice to have the school board members here for their swearing in because it's a big honor to be elected and it's a, and I think it's, it's a time to recognize and reflect upon the responsibilities that we take on and so I hope that we might change that going forward so um, everyone can see everyone's participation um, rather than just waiting for that uh, two meetings a month that might show up on a TV if you see Channel 3. And I know Tody does an incredible job. It's really everyone's schedules that we try to work around. So um, thank you. It's not her fault. Um, okay. I wanted to thank you for electing me vice chair. As my, um, I told my wife that this might happen, and she said, yeah, that's like being elected, um, you know, the beauty queen at a state fair. You just get to sit there and wave a lot. And so uh, I'm really kind of... Uh, Excited, but you know, I didn't know you wanted it. I would have given it to you. I didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you very much. Um, the bigger thing is, I, I really just want to thank Bill for stepping forward. I think you're going to do an incredible job. You're the right person at the right time. Last year, uh, you did a, a very good job representing not only the council as a whole um, in all of your present, uh, representations at functions. Um, you know, I'm excited to actually retire in, uh, I hope, 20 years <laughs> and be as active as you are. I don't know if I really want to be on the council in 20 years, but uh, um, I wish because you do a, a great job for us, and I really appreciate you stepping forward this time. Um, the last comment I wanted to make uh, was, you know, there's been some uh, sidebar or some emails and some conversations around um, civil discourse and how we can work with that within our organizations. And I think it's a really important question that really deserves more of a public discussion around that rather than a private email. But what I did want to mention was that I do have to ask and question why people might be deliberative in their attacks of others, because that contributes to what people are worried about with our relationships is because we are constantly attacking others. Um, if anything, I think that this last election told us that the community doesn't want us to participate in that type of behavior. And I think that while deliberate civic discourse is necessary in solving a problem, but that requires evaluation and evidence to support the engagement and the conversation, and not someone's personal opinion about another person. And I think that that's what hurts our community when we're trying to find solutions, because I do believe every person that is elected does it because they love the community and they want to find a solution that represents that entire community. So I hope that we start this new year off really fresh without any reservations or hesitations. Um, and that we don't go backwards, but rather look forward to what we can do, because uh, I do think that we have a great council and we're going to achieve a lot. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. Uh, so I also wanted to join in congratulating uh, Chair Chairman Donovan and, and Vice Chairman uh, Baybine. Um, I think that uh, the leadership team is, is really going to set us up to have a very inclusive and, uh, and highly functional uh, board. So 
So I appreciate the uh, both of you stepping forward. Um, I also want to um, to thank the members of the community uh, for the overwhelming support. Um, it was um, you know even walking around and talking to people that didn't necessarily agree with me. Everyone was was still very friendly and uh, supportive. Um, and so I really appreciate that. And I also appreciate the uh, members of the, the council that have been very accessible and, and willing to meet with me and help me get up to speed. And, and Tom, also, thank you. Um, and I just wanted to say that I'm really looking forward to this year. I think we're going to have a, a great year. And um, go team. Council <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just add, to, I'll pile on. Uh, congratulations to Chair Donovan and uh, Vice Chair Babine. Um, I'm looking forward to working with both of you. I, I also think we're going to have a fabulous year um, with a change of tone and um, really putting some, some th um, initiatives forward that I think will make sense for all of Scarborough. Um, I would like to welcome Morgan Chapo to sitting in the front row here. He's a Boy Scout, as you can see from his uniform, and he did an awfully good job, wicked good, leading us in the uh, pledge this evening. I had the honor of uh, being interviewed by him for his merit badge uh, to do with government. Um, he is in the middle school, um, and he's very much interested in writing, and we talked a little bit about journalism, and he asked some very good questions of me that I had to think about. So welcome, and I'm glad you came tonight. And don't you know hesitate to call if you have any problems with us on the council. I'd be happy to help. Call me. Call me. Get my number. Um, Operation Hope. I have been going back and forth with uh, Officer uh, Sergeant Gill, who's just doing a fabulous job with this, as well as. Uh, um, Officer Higgins, um, 50 people in 50 days. Uh, last night or yesterday, they did thought, thought they were run, ran into a stone wall because uh, the scholarship beds are running out. Um, but we are having a forum tomorrow here uh, from 1 to 3:30, and I happen to know that there's going to be a representative from Speaker Markey's office, a representative from um, Justin Alphon, who's the uh, Senate Minority Leader. Um, the Public Safety Commissioner from the Governor's Office will be representing the Governor's Office, so I'm planning on going and I encourage any of my fellow counselors to come. It will hopefully be a vigorous discussion on what should we be doing, because it's been in the news a lot, as we know, um, about what's to be done. Um, and my mantra is addiction is not a crime. Addiction is a disease, and so we really need to be dealing with that as a community. I'm also going to be meeting with Steffi Graff of Project Grace in the next couple weeks to find out um, how maybe we can work with Project Grace and doing something with uh, helping Operation Hope, because they need money very much so for airlines, if nothing else, to get people air tickets, because regretfully most of the treatment beds are far, far away, which shouldn't be that way, but that's okay. We'll work on that. Uh, United Way Community Dialogue, December 9th, from 6 to nine, excuse me, six to 8 in the library. Um, Jim Elkins um, uh, sent, I believe, all the counselors a notification on that, and they'd love to have counselors come and give our two cents worth on what we think some of the needs are in the community. Um, Project Grace is putting together Thanksgiving baskets. Steffi met with Sean and I the other day. Um, I, I apologize, I don't have all the details. I do know they're going to be putting them together next week. Obviously, Thanksgiving's next week. But if you want more information on how you can help either by blah, donating money, making up a food basket, or, or uh, bringing foods to, I believe it's probably St. Max's Church, you can call 8835111. So that's 8835111, or you can Google Project Grace, and their website will come up uh, with information. And oh, hunting. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of a former counselor always used to remind us to wear orange this time of year. Well, that's not why I'm bringing it up. I got a phone. I've received a couple of phone calls regarding hunting on uh, Scarborough Land Trust land because um, there's some concern among hunters that the uh, 
the Pleasant Hill property has been taken out of their hunting grounds. They are not allowing hunting on that property, which is their right to do so because uh, the land trust owns the property. It's like I could post my land if I wanted to to avoid hunting. But I will let people know that with permission of the land trust, you have to call the land trust, you may hunt at Fuller Farm, the Broad Turn property, Warren Woods in the Libby River property, but please remember, and this goes for anything, you don't hunt unless you ask permission of the landowner. Remember uh, that you're trespassing on someone else's land uh, when you hunt. So uh, just uh, be clear about that. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, just to pick up on Councilor Katarina's comment about Operation Hope, it really is Scarborough being the little engine that could. Uh, uh, people may have noticed that the city of Augusta has now uh, initiated uh, uh, participation in this program so that we have uh, a North Country partner, as it were, uh, to help out because we had people traveling <coughs> from considerable distances. Mm -hmm. And it will be up to our state to find ways. We will run out of scholarship money and probably sooner than later because it is an addiction these people can be cured, they deserve it, and, uh, uh, but it, it requires uh, some funding. Uh, we have some uh, administrative businesses. Business. Uh, these are the uh, council standing committees. Uh, each year we uh, pass out these requests that people get them back so that they can indicate uh, 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 positions on our standing committees that they think they would uh, like to be able to serve in. Uh, I will say that uh, I was made aware that the school board has already met, has already uh, uh, had its new members uh, sworn in and appointed uh, their finance committee. Uh, it's the one seriously, continuously active uh, committee uh, therefore, I, uh, having given some considerable thought and having spoken with most everyone on the town council <laughs> of, of, about the uh, appointments, uh, am going to uh, try to take advantage of the opportunity of being here tonight and appoint the finance committee uh, uh, with uh, Councillor Baybine uh, returning as the chair, uh, Councillor Hayes returning as a finance committee member and Ca Councillor Caeso uh, joining again with considerable financial experience. So we'd like to be able to get off and running. I think one of our mantras this year uh, that was uh, noted uh, uh, by several council members is we're going to work hard for the benefit of the town. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a busy, active, and I think a very enjoyable year. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, uh, one other thing that I want to bring to everyone's attention, we're going to try and do something of a retreat. Uh, and probably that may be too glamorous or overblown a word for what we actually have in mind. <laughs> <coughs> uh, really building off discussions but that have occurred between Councillors Hayes and Katarina uh, about team building and really wanting to just get off the ground uh, in a very constructive way uh, we are going to hold a, a, a team building session. Uh, it's going to be facilitated by the Delphi group. Dana Morris Jones and John Shore, both Scarborough residents, are going to uh, assist us in this, and it's going to have uh, two components. <clears throat> next, uh, December 2nd, which is the next time we meet, uh, we're going to start the meeting uh, as we have with workshops in the past. We meet before 7 o'clock. In this case, we're going to meet at 3 o'clock uh, in a informal retreat format at Piper Shores. Uh, the session is going to focus on getting to know each other better, <coughs> creating better working relationships. Uh, 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 we're doing it off-site uh, uh, really to remove distractions. Uh, and any barriers that might exist to sort of an open participation. Uh, uh, though this is technically a public meeting because when the seven of us meet, it is always a public meeting. Uh, uh, we assure you that no public business is actually going to take place. 
uh, we ask for the public and the media to allow the council to work through this initial session uh, with some privacy so that uh, we can have a good, candid uh, and uh, uh, exchange to build better relationships. And we have two new people, uh, and uh, we've lost two of our leaders from the prior council, so this just seemed like the right thing to do. The second session uh, is going to be at our next meeting uh, in December, the second meeting. December 16th, it's <clears throat> uh, always generally the one at which we have a goal setting session. And we usually do it as a workshop at 6 o'clock, and we will do it again uh, on the 16th in that fashion. But we're going to use the same facilitators uh, to, to uh, help give us a little bit of guidance on whether or not we're being able to kind of uh, uh, use some of the things that we're uh, uh, educating ourselves on to uh, better interact, better communicate, uh, to be a better council. And that really is going to be the goal for the year. We're, we've had good leadership the last two years that I've served, uh, and uh, it's something nice to build on. When you've seen uh, uh, chairs do a good job, uh, you just want to say, let's keep it going. So that's, I think, where we're at. So uh, I think that concludes it for this evening, and I'll move to adjourn. Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Thank you.